So having recently bought the new lathe, my original plan was to do a few lathe specific projects to hopefully get to grips with the new machine. However, I think these plans might need to be put on the back burner for a bit because I do need to quickly fix the milling machine. Now I think I've always been pretty positive about this machine. Despite it being a Chinese import, the build quality is pretty good for what it is and for what I paid for it. It's definitely better than the quality of the mini lathe, which is made by the same company at the same factory. With that said, I've never really fully trusted the electronics that power this. The board that powered the lathe lasted less than a year, and it seems like the board in this mill has given up after just over two years. Now obviously I could buy a replacement board, which would be a pretty straightforward fix, but for whatever reason, the boards are really overpriced for what they are, and I think we're looking at at least 400 bucks to replace this board, which I'm not buying. However, I do have a spare three phase, three horsepower motor and VFD on hand, so I might as well put that to use. Now, if I'm completely honest, my intention was to always fit this to the milling machine once I replaced the old lathe, but the original plan was to have the milling machine working so I could use it to help me make the brackets to mount the motor. But with the milling machine broken, it's gonna make my job a little bit harder. But I don't really have much of a backup plan, so I guess I'm gonna to have to make it work. So you join me at the top of the spindle, and as you can probably see, there really isn't all that much going on. The motor sits in the housing, and it drives the spindle via a timing belt. So all I have to do is rip out the old motor, mount the new one, and add a new timing belt pulley. With the way that it's currently set up, the spindle speed is effectively cut in half, and that's fine for a 6000 RPM DC motor, but the motor that I'm replacing it with only runs at about 1400 RPM. The spindle speed would be way too low to be useful. And that's the old one horsepower brushed motor. And nestled at the back of the mill is the control boards. And at least visually, I can't see anything that's immediately jumping out that would have caused this board to fail. On the other board, it was pretty obvious which resistor failed, which led to the board blowing up but here it isn't really obvious what's gone wrong. Either way, the end result is the same and the board doesn't work anymore. Now I'm not really sure if it was already obvious, but there is no chance that this three phase motor is gonna be able to fit in the space that was occupied by the old motor, which means I'll have to hold it in place using some sort of bracket. And because I'm not using the old mini lathe, I see no issue in reusing the old stiffening plate and remaking it into the bracket. And that was going all well until the angle grinder gave out. And a quick trip to Bunnings later, and I can get back to work. In any event, I've been looking at upgrading to a larger angle grinder for some time, so I really wasn't all that bothered that this angle grinder had bit the dust. And before I fully weld up the bracket, I'll drill a hole for the motor shaft to stick through. Now ideally, I would have bored out this hole using the milling machine, but with the milling machine broken, I'll have to resort to using a cordless drill and a hole saw. Not really ideal, but I have done it before. However, this time, I can really tell that the cordless drill isn't happy at all about doing this work. 
And for that matter, neither was the whole saw. And even after replacing the saw, I could tell that the drill really wasn't happy. So I'll let it cool down and I'll resort to plan B. And after all that, the motor spindle now lines up well with the hole. Which means I can now properly weld up the plate. And with it all welded, I can now drill four holes so I can now bolt the bracket to the top of the mill. However, before I can do that, I think I'm going to have to get another drill. So another trip to Bunnings later and I can finally finish the bracket. At least the new drill is brushless and performs a lot better than the old one. With the bracket now done, we can now focus on the timing belt pulley. As I said before, the pulley that's doing the driving, or the one that's connected to the motor, is too small. I can't modify the one at the spindle end because the pulley is sort of moulded into the spline shaft assembly and I can't currently machine that. So I don't really have much of an option but to change the one at the motor end. Now the type of timing belt that we're dealing with is a 5MT timing belt and the geometry for a pulley doesn't look all that complicated and it should be easy enough to make with a working milling machine. Keyword there, working milling machine. And just like that, we now have a working milling machine. Except the top speed at the spindle end is now 700 RPM. Now I can increase the RPM by running the spindle motor at a higher frequency than it is designed for, and that will net you higher RPMs. But as I understand it, it's not always great for the motor if you do that. With that said, I do know that a lot of people do do these with these motors and I don't really think I have much of a choice here. So I will be running it at double the frequency, at least for the moment. With that sorted, we now need to make a pulley which is the same size or larger as the one on the spindle. Which means I need a piece of stock that is roughly 80mm in diameter. Now I didn't have a piece of stock on hand that was that size, but it shouldn't be too difficult to cast it in aluminium. Unfortunately the aluminium that I picked didn't turn out to be the most machining friendly alloy, even after giving it a basic heat treatment to make it more machining friendly. It had a real tendency of sticking to all my tooling, even the inserts that are specifically meant for machining aluminium. It was just a really unpleasant, gummy aluminium. Unfortunately though, milling it wasn't all that much better. Just not enough RPM for the 3mm cutter that I was using, and the aluminium kept welding itself to the cutting edge. 
The end result, effectively, isn't all that hard to guess. I blew through three 3mm cutters in the span of 10 minutes trying to do this, and I gave up there. Thankfully though, I did have a backup plan. I cut out a piece of steel plate, and I turned that up in the lathe. I'll then set it up in the milling machine, and use the hole pattern feature on the DRO to drill out the profile of the pulley, which I can then turn down on the lathe. Now unfortunately, this isn't the perfect method, and I won't be creating the full profile, but it will do the job until my replacement pulley turns up from China. Now it's definitely not perfect, and I might want to add a guard to stop the bottom from rubbing, but this will definitely do until the replacement arrives, and it seems to work just fine. Now the final hurdle is just going to be wiring this whole thing up. The VFD obviously is quite bulky, and if I can, I'd like to keep the stock control panel as stock as possible. I'd also like to mount the VFD around the back, probably where the old control panel mounted. Thankfully though, wiring it up wasn't the worst thing in the world. Just keeping track of the nightmare of wires was a bit difficult, but after a few late nights, I think I'd gotten it to work. And by that, I mean the old on and off switches work in order to turn it on and switch the direction of the motor, and the old potentiometer and the RPM gauge still work, which I'm really happy about. In fact, if you ignore the massive motor on top, you really wouldn't know that anything had changed. With all that sorted, the final thing left to do is make a new cover that can now accommodate the VFD. And like that, the new cover fits neatly into place. Now I did think about adding a vent for the VFD fan, but even pushing it, it really doesn't chuck out all that much heat, and what little heat is made will hopefully be absorbed by the steel cover. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the new milling machine. For what it's worth, it doesn't look too goofy with this new motor. Obviously it is a bit oversized, but it doesn't look all that out of place. Dare I say, it has a bit of a Bridgeport vibe to it. Now the real question though is, well, how does it machine? I've got an offcut of 20mm thick steel, so let's find out. I'll start off by drilling a 4mm pilot hole, and that chews through the steel like butter. But that's only a pilot drill for a 16mm Deming bit. All 
All right, give me a second. I don't think I adjusted the timing belt correctly. And that is performing a lot better. Still not as much torque as a geared head mill, but considering how slow it used to be when I was using this drill with the old motor, and considering that it didn't stall out, this is a huge improvement. Finally, let's try milling. Now the cutter easily machines the full 20mm thick steel using a 2mm step over, which is more than I've ever done by about half a millimetre. It also handles a 2.5mm step over, but I also feel through the hand wheel that this machine wants to shake itself apart. The motor definitely has a lot more to give, but unfortunately, I think we're running out of rigidity with this machine. Definitely a very impressive cut, but I know we can push it even further. But before I can do that, I do need to fix the rigidity issues. Don't worry, I definitely can fix it.